If you're considering opening a small business, um, it can be kind of daunting, kind of scary. You're like, what do I do? How do I do anything? How does one even begin? So I'm here. This is, I'm your girl, hopefully. Hey besties, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Today's video is going to be a Q&A, specifically a shop Q&A. I asked on my Instagram story for my shop Instagram if anybody had any questions about owning a small business, specifically owning like a sticker shop or you know, the kind of shop that I now own. I thought this would be kind of helpful for some people. I know it can be hard to find like the answers to some questions about uh, certain things and pe certain people have like specific questions that they're curious about, even just about my shop specifically. So I thought this could be kind of fun um, and helpful for some people, maybe, I don't know. I hope so. Little background on me. My name is Ariana. I own a small business called Cozy Cloudy Co. I sell um, what started as just stickers has now turned into stickers, binders, collect books, basically all things K-pop journal, K-pop deco, K-pop collecting, stationery, journaling, whatever floats your boat. I'm your girl. We have quite a few questions on the good old Instagram stories. Okay, first question is, when did you decide you wanted to open your small business slash sticker shop? My first shop update was in November of 2020. I wanna say I first started considering opening a sticker shop like that summer, like summer of 2020. That sounds about right. Yeah, it's been a minute, almost two years. November will mark two years like officially of my shop, which is insane. Uh, Oof. Next question is, why did you decide to start a small business? Okay, well, basically, um, <clears throat> I decided that I wanted to start K-pop journaling. I had watched like a ton of YouTube videos on K-pop journaling and saw it like here and there on Instagram. And I was like, I really wanna do that. And it was like COVID, like quarantine. And I was like, why not? Like, why don't I just start? So I started my journal Instagram first. And at that point, I never even considered opening a shop. I never considered making products or anything until I realized that like everybody had really cute stickers. And I was like, where are we getting these? Like, where did everybody get these cute stickers? I want some too. I realized that people were getting them like in Korea, like from Korean shops or like just from overseas. And I didn't know how to order those like at all. I remember back then like confetti stickers were huge. Like confetti stickers had the biggest grip on the deco community back then. They still do like confetti stickers. Like we still love her, but it was insane. It was like, it actually was insane. I just kind of got to thinking like, what if I made them myself? And I didn't have like the tools to make them yet so i was just like really considering it i had money saved up for me to like get like all the supplies i needed um and i felt like i was going to be able to use everything anyways even if like the sticker shop flopped so i was like why don't we just give this a go so that's that's kind of the origin to why i started a shop next question is how to build a social media account for your small business and reach out to people this kind of relates to what i was just talking about i started my journal instagram first shout out to cloud journals if you guys don't know um cloud journals used to be my instagram account it was a journal like a k-pop journal instagram account we love her we miss her she was a moment and then on my journal instagram because i had started to have some followers i think it was at like 2k or something like that so what i did was i started to like hint towards my shop on my journal instagram i wanted it to be like a very like organic like introduction like i wanted it to be clear that i was my audience like i wanted everybody to know that like i genuinely use stickers like i genuinely journal so i just started to like use my stickers that i was making in my journal spreads and posting them and i would like post about my shop on my story and then a lot of people started to think that i was going to 
uh, like sell my stuff on my journal Instagram and that's when I realized like okay now it's time for me to make a separate Instagram for my shop so I did that and it was just kind of like a combination of the two like obviously my shop Instagram didn't have as much as my journal Instagram at the time um, but I just decided to use my journal Instagram as an advantage um, with the you know a little bit of followers that I had on there anytime I posted on my shop Instagram I would obviously like repost that post to like my story on my journal Instagram Instagram and they just kind of went hand in hand like I said I would use my stickers in my posts um, and tag my shop Instagram and then much much later down the road is when I started to uh, like use TikTok for some stuff for my shop but that was like way later so my best advice for that would be it's best to be able to like identify with your audience if you are your audience that's your biggest like marketing tool i think to be like i use this stuff too and this is how i use this because then when it comes to like product photos and everything else not, nothing's hard not that you already have all the stuff you were gonna do it anyway right like you were gonna use your stickers anyway my best bet to like grow social media would just be to organically use your products um and of course you know you can tie it into like trends and stuff and trust and organic growth like of course it'd be great to like you know blow up overnight but i think your best bet at success is through a very organic and steady growth because i think especially now on social media people really resonate with like authenticity people can tell people can tell if you actually use your products they feel like they can trust you and they're like i want to support this person they they're like me they do what i do i think now like all my social media helps me relay that to people like my youtube and my tiktok and my instagram accounts all of it now kind of all plays a role but in the very beginning it was like just those two instagrams i think having my journal instagram first played a huge role in the growth of my shop instagram so yeah Next question, someone said, what's your favorite shop product? I'll give my top three, cause I think picking one is too hard, but I would say my prints, my collect books, and my sending all my love sticker sheets. Yeah. A lot of people asked um, if it was hard to start a small business at first. I don't really think so honestly because I when I started it I started it with the mindset of almost like a hobby if that makes sense like I didn't start it thinking like I want to make a lot of money or I want to get a lot of Instagram followers I truly just wanted to make this stuff for myself and then I considered like why don't I see if anybody else wants this you know it, it really wasn't like stressful in the beginning I was really enjoying it like I, I just truly was enjoying what I was doing in the very beginning and I still am I was just kind of taking it day by day but I do remember that I was very very nervous like I was very nervous about the first opening yeah I, I wouldn't say it was hard in the beginning I think because I started it from a very like simple and uh, fun mindset so it wasn't really too hard in the beginning. Yeah. Another question that a lot of people ask is what's the best website to use for selling products online? When I first started my shop, I only used Etsy. Etsy is a really great place to start out because it allows you to build somewhat of a following, somewhat of an audience because Etsy is a marketplace. So essentially what that means is like, uh, if somebody does a general search for like, you know alphabet stickers and you sell those and you have that in the title of your listing there's a chance that your stickers or you know your products will come up in someone's search and then they can just buy from you without you know following your instagram or your socials or anything like that yeah etsy's very beginner friendly um it basically sets everything up for you you just kind of fill in all the blanks but then as my shop updates started to get a little bit bigger um etsy does take fees and they do you know take some money from you um and in the beginning i didn't really notice it too much because i obviously wasn't making much to begin with um but as like i was having like bigger updates and i would get like you know a larger amount of money and 
one setting on you know the day of the update i started to notice the fees and a few of my friends who own shops as well had started to move on to different websites um, and different like e-commerce platforms so that's when I moved over to Big Cartel I loved Big Cartel I think Big Cartel was really great again it's super beginner friendly and very easy to use very easy to figure out they have like templates and stuff for you to design the website so it was a little bit more extensive than Etsy Etsy you don't have to decide you don't have to design like your uh, shop like your storefront like your website you know Etsy kind of does that for you you can like rearrange things how you want but it's pretty much already set for you so that was a bit of a learning curve with Big Cartel but Big Cartel is super beginner friendly and then now I have since switched to Shopify and I also am back on Etsy the reason I'm back on Etsy in addition to Shopify is because Etsy handles international uh, like postal taxes so like Europe and the UK um, they have some postal taxes so instead of having to pay an unknown postal tax when they get their package delivered to them etsy automatically collects that and then it's like shown on the label and they don't have to pay the tax um so that's another great thing to consider if you will be selling internationally etsy really handles international shipping really well. The reason that I switched from Big Cartel to Shopify is I just kind of felt like I was at the point in my business and my shop to switch to Shopify because Shopify is the most expensive out of all three, but it is the most um, like official and it allows me to really have a much more like smooth selling process, especially for the amount that I'm selling now and the type of orders that I'm receiving and the type of products I'm selling. Shopify allows me to use like so many different apps and allows me to expand my rep program and allows me to make my website look a little bit more how I want it to look. I think I would suggest, even though Etsy does take fees, I would suggest to start on Etsy first just to kind of get a feel for it. I'm barely two years in and I'm already have made several changes for how I sell my stuff but yeah that's what I would recommend next question is how do you get ideas of what to draw I have an iPad Air and Procreate but I suck at drawing and I bought it to draw stickers <laughs> okay I would say that when I first got my iPad and I first downloaded Procreate um, I thought I was gonna be able to like just immediately draw so well like just as well as i do um with like regular traditional art media um but digital media is definitely a learning curve it definitely takes some getting used to the first couple of drafts and drawings that i did of stickers or whatever else were horrible like literally so bad if you are like in the beginning stages i would say to just take your time and experiment experiment don't draw anything thinking i'm definitely gonna sell this because that puts a little too much pressure on it you know in terms of getting ideas of what to draw i would say in the very beginning it was uh, mainly what i wanted to use what i thought was popular at the time just kind of putting my own spin on it like my own art style to it i also get a lot of inspiration from different media that i consume like different art that i consume i really like to consider like what is popular obviously sometimes if i do consider that for products then i always think like can i make this my own can i make this fit like my style and my sort of aesthetic or brand so to speak i think inspiration can come from literally anywhere but the bulk of it should be obviously your own art style your own uh take on things um and yeah just kind of whatever you want to make next question is any advice for small businesses wanting to host rep searches they seem really intimidating especially for small businesses with a small following love your work thank you i found this to be a very interesting question and i really wanted to answer it because I think rep searches are a great way to grow your following actually on social media. I don't think you should hold a rep search before you have, I would say, at least one update, but I would probably suggest two updates. What I mean by that is I think you should have sold some 
products right before you hold a rep search just so that people can feel comfortable to be your rep and that people would want to apply even if they don't follow you when i held my rep search i just did it um through my instagram and i made like a long you know write up in the post um and there was a link to a google form for people to apply through there where i just had some super simple questions like leave your instagram or your tiktok handle and you know why do you think you would be a good rep for my shop uh, i also had people describe their accounts or their aesthetics in three words and that was really really interesting um the reps that i chose their response to that question really stood out and really like resonated with me i like to keep my rep program super chill like i want my reps to use my stuff how they would if they don't think they would ever use one of my products i don't expect them to use it and i'm not gonna ask them to because I feel like their followers would be able to tell like why are you using this that doesn't make any sense kind of thing um, so yeah I would say pick uh, people that you think could organically and authentically use your products but the actual rep search itself shouldn't be intimidating at all if you're worried about not having a lot of followers I don't think that's an issue at all I would just say like I said like have some sales first just to establish that like level of like trust and like officialness with people um but i think it's a great way to grow a following so you shouldn't be worried if you don't have um quote unquote a big following to have a rep search in terms of finding manufacturers the most used place i know for finding manufacturers is alibaba that's where i first found my sticker manufacturer i won't give my manufacturer um only because the manufacturer was suggested to me from a friend so because of that it's not my place to share it again to other people but my biggest advice for finding a manufacturer especially on alibaba is to just read reviews um just do general searches search anything you can think of that can relate to what you're looking for um so that you can find what you're looking for and just read the reviews like read reviews if you think like oh this one may work I think the reviews are really good on that bookmark the page so that you don't lose the shop uh, or the supplier the manufacturer and then just keep researching like don't go with the first one you find do research read all the reviews if there's not a lot of reviews look at the manufacturer's page on alibaba you can like go to the manufacturer or the supplier's page and they'll have other products that they manufacture listed on there and there might be some reviews for those um you just want to find someone that's established i think alibaba also has a system where they like will list like how long the person has been a manufacturer on alibaba etc like all those kind of things um so my biggest advice is just to do general searches uh find ones you like save them for later and then go back and sort of do like pros and cons on the couple that you sort of narrowed it down to and also just messaging people like messaging manufacturers not thinking like okay this is the one i'm gonna go to message everybody and ask the same questions and get a feel for like whose energy who you think would be the easiest to communicate with like those are all super important you're handing over your work you're handing over your products to this company to help you create what you want um but there is a lot of back and forth and i think it's much much easier to do that with somebody who is kind or understanding or has fast communication those are all key things to consider when finding a manufacturer because working with a manufacturer can get very frustrating and very like uh defeating very quickly um because it's it's just a big process also be aware if finding um, manufacturers on Alibaba be aware of things like time zones just a general like idea of all those things will help you with the communication if that makes sense going off of the last question somebody asks um, for advice on preventing manufacturers from stealing your designs were you able to sort out everything with copyright so if you don't know um a little while ago sometime last year i think summer of last year i dealt with a little situation of my designs getting stolen unfortunately and basically one day i just got 
a ton of messages saying that my stickers were on AliExpress and it just continued from there. I just kept getting more and more um, messages of more and more listings on more and more sites um, and it just sort of came to the conclusion that my designs were completely stolen and they were all over the place and it went from me thinking I could just message like one shop and be like hi can you please take these down to me not even knowing where or who was selling my designs so that wasn't fun that was pretty brutal i don't believe it to be from a, my manufacturer stealing them i think it was from me posting them on instagram it was very popular for sticker shops to post like a digital version of their stickers as like a preview um and then you would kind of like watermark it so that nobody would steal it but these people that stole my designs um, basically just took it with the watermark and sold like a really, really, really bad low quality version of my stickers, um, which sucked, of course. It just kind of was unfortunately like it was what it was and I had to just kind of learn the lesson of like, okay, I definitely won't be posting anything like that. Um, of my designs anymore. I now only post like physical photos of my products um, rather than digital. In terms of manufacturers not selling your designs, I think again that's just some that's just par for the course of finding a manufacturer is feeling them out. Again, reading the reviews. If somebody has no reviews or if they have bad reviews, you know, it's probably not someone to instill your trust with your original work. But I remember messaging my manufacturer and just asking her to not use my products for their uh, company's like product photos on Alibaba or where wherever else they uh, did like their services because um, I just didn't want my designs posted by anyone that wasn't me and they were very understanding about it and very uh, kind about it after that it's kind of just like having faith in people and having trust in people and hoping that they do the right thing and help you but I think that's where reviews like I said play a huge role in finding a manufacturer Okay, getting into some packaging questions. Somebody asked, how do you package stamped and how do you package bubble mailers? Do research based on where you live because shipping is different for literally everybody. Even if you just live in the US like me, I think it's important to research your local post offices, research who has drop-offs, who has drop boxes for stamped. I just write my return address, write the person's address, and weigh out the envelope to see how many stamps I'm gonna need. And for bubble mailers, bubble mailers come in all shapes and sizes. When I first started, I had, I think, six by 10 bubble mailers, which I still use. Those fit like majority of my shop products. But now that I sell Luca Lab, um, like binders, which are like A5, and uh, bigger and some stuff come in boxes like their own individual boxes i got um bigger bubble mailers but they all still work the same the way i send tracked mail is through the website pirate ship i highly recommend pirate ship pirate ship allows you to connect your etsy your big cartel your shopify whatever you use you can connect it with pirate ship and then they will just import all your orders with all your orders names and addresses and emails you can just input uh, the size of your mailer the size of your box how much it weighs etc pirate ship has a lot of like information on there to figure out how to use it and of course there's also a lot of tutorials on how to use it on youtube which i recommend i've been using it since my very first shop update and i honestly i can't see using anything else it just helps me so much it makes the shipping process so easy helps me a lot a lot a lot a lot next question is how to make your packaging more special packaging is something that's very fun for me a way to make your packaging more special i think would be to try to make it try to make it in line with your brand or your aesthetic my packaging has changed with my shop i make my thank you cards and i make my receipts myself which i think is another way to up your packaging like you can of course just use the packing slip that you can print from etsy 
or whatever you're using. Freebies. I think freebies are a great way to up your packaging. I myself do sticker freebies. I also do print freebies for larger orders and I do Polaroid or K-pop related freebies for K-pop related orders. So for example, if someone orders my 17 print, then I will give them a 17 Polaroid or a 17 uh, like fan made photo card or a 17 photo of some sort. I think just get creative with it and align it to your aesthetic. Like you want everything to be cohesive. You want everything to like match if that makes sense. Somebody said, if you could go back in time and tell your past self some advice, what would it be? Literally just take breaks. That would be the one piece of advice I would tell myself if I could go back in time would just be that it's okay to take breaks. When you own your own small business, it's very easy to lose sight of like when work stops, right? So like for me, my shop started as something that was very simple and very small. And as it started to grow and turn more into like a job, it was very hard for me to like stop working. It wasn't until I got to the point where I was basically burnt out, like where I was like considering closing my shop because I was like that burnt out and that stressed out with everything that I learned that like I need to take a break, right? And that taking one little break will do like wonders for me. Um, so now like I try my best to not work on weekends and you know not work super late at night unless I'm like really in the zone on drawing something. Um, yeah I try to set more of like a work schedule for myself. Obviously I own my business so like I am my own boss in that sense and I don't have to necessarily follow like a 9 to 5 but um I do try my best to like take a lot more breaks than I did in the beginning because in the beginning I, I literally don't think I took any breaks like I don't think I took any breaks but yeah that would be my biggest advice if I could go back in time would be to just take breaks <laughs> somebody asked how do you balance oh where do I go okay somebody asked how do you balance YouTube and your shop with school and personal life so i'm not in school anymore i graduated college but when i started my shop i was still in college um and it was kind of hard to balance my shop and college in the beginning after like my first update and when i wanted to like have another update it was hard to like gauge and manage when i had the time to even do that you know when i had the time to design stuff when i had the time to cut stickers it's kind of like having a job while you're in school like it's not the easiest you know it just kind of like whenever you can sort of thing in terms of balancing like youtube and like all my social media and my shop and to my personal life um i think it's just sort of relates to me saying like take breaks it's okay to give yourself a day off even if you own your own business and that's it that's all the questions for this video um i hope this was somewhat helpful if you're considering opening a small business um and if you're not i hope this was somewhat entertaining <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If anybody has any more questions that I didn't answer in this video, you can of course leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And I'll see you in the next one. And good luck to anybody if you're starting a journey of a small business. I wish you all the best. You can always message me at any time if you have any questions. I'll see you guys next time. That's it. <laughs> Bye.